On today's show, Nissan and Atal Design create a new GTR prototype. Dodge comes out with its most powerful SRT Hellcat lineup ever, and robotics experts explain why robots will not kill jobs. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. And today's show seems to be all about piston engine horsepower and better electric vehicles. So let's get started. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of Atal Design and to celebrate the Nissan GTR, the styling company and the automaker came together to produce the GTR 50 prototype. Thanks to engine and turbo upgrades, the power output is now 710 horsepower and 575 pound-feet of torque. The design is dramatic, featuring sharp edges with gray and gold panels. The distinctive round taillights now stick outside the bodywork, and the third brake light extends from the roof instead of the wing. Let us know what you think of the new design. The GTR 50 debuts in Europe next month. And yesterday, Dodge unveiled the 2019 Challenger and Charger, and they're more muscular than ever. And here's a new name to learn, the Red Eye. The 2019 SRT Hellcat Red Eye gets the same 6.2 liter V8 that appears in the Dodge Demon, but the power is rated at 797 horsepower. The Red Eye also gets a wide body kit and is supposed to be more like a proper daily driver like the Hellcat. The new Hellcat, along with the Red Eye, get functional hood scoops and a line lock function, which will be good for hard launches and burnouts. On the Charger side of the equation, it keeps the 6.2 liter Hemi with 707 horsepower. Chargers will be available for the third quarter of 2018, while Challengers will be ready for the fourth quarter. You know, China is the fastest growing EV market, and it just got a little bit bigger. Startup Neo just delivered its first seven passenger ES8 electric SUVs. It's powered by a dual electric motor setup that combines for 644 horsepower and has a swappable 70 kilowatt hour battery pack that provides up to 220 miles of range. A couple of cool technology features include wireless in-car charging for the key fob, so no more pesky battery replacements and it gets a wild artificial intelligence system called Nomi, which can do everything from changing the radio station to preparing the vehicle as you walk up and even closing the sunroof when it starts to rain. All ES8s will be made to order, so customers can customize them to their own tastes. Still to come, a major supermarket chain is going to test home delivery of groceries using autonomous vehicles. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Kroger, the largest supermarket chain in the U.S., is going to test delivering groceries in autonomous vehicles. It's partnered with a Silicon Valley startup called Neuro, which was founded by engineers from Google and it's the first deployment of Neuro's hardware and software. Customers can order groceries through Kroger's click list ordering system and Neuro's app, which will then be delivered by a self-driving pod. The service will be launched in a yet-to-be-named pilot market this fall. And earlier this year, we reported on how Freightliner would deliver electric trucks to some customers. Well, now we know who those customers are. Penske Truck Leasing and a logistics company called NFI Industries. Penske will get 10 Freightliner E-Cascadia heavy-duty trucks and 10 medium-duty EM2s. NFI will get 10 Freightliner E-Cascadias, which are Class 8 tractors with 550 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, a range of up to 250 miles, and can charge up to 80% in about 90 minutes. The EM2s are Class 6 trucks, with 325 kilowatt hours of batteries, a range of up to 230 miles, and can charge up to 80% in about 60 minutes. These trucks will be used as a field test at first and go into volume production in 2021. Chevrolet keeps improving its Volt plug-in hybrid vehicle 
it now has a 7.2 kilowatt charging system available, up from 3.6 kilowatts. And the change is dramatic. Using a 240 volt level 2 charger, the upgraded volt can be completely charged up in under two and a half hours. That's about half the time it used to take. The new charging system is available as an option on base volts and comes standard on the Eltin trim line. Are robots going to kill off manufacturing jobs? Coming up next, we'll have robotics experts weigh in on that question. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. The public's perception is that robots are going to take over manufacturing jobs from humans. But in the following clip from AutoLine this week, our panel of experts say that robots will actually help create jobs. The real threat to jobs is the inability to compete. If you can't compete, there are no jobs. Robots are actually saving and creating jobs in the U.S. And if you look at it over a 20-year period, we found that every time robot sales went up, unemployment went down. The opposite, when robot sales go down, unemployment goes up. So that's been the history. We think that's the future as well. Mike, how do you create jobs with robots? I would think that a robot's going into a plant to repla replace workers. Yeah, sure, that's a great question. Um, you know, when you, when you think about manufacturing, um, you think about productivity, and as these manufacturers need to create more things, um, sometimes the robots assisting the people in terms of helping them make the things enables those end customers to be able to produce more things, and then you need more people to do all the people things that surround all the things that can be automated. So when you, when you tend to make more things, there's a, still a lot of people that need to be employed, and those people grow as, as we're able to produce and make more things. And Marty, how do you answer that same question, too? Well, I mean, we're always trying to be more competitive. We're trying to make our workplace safer. We're trying to, to, to build more products for our customers. And uh, to do that using the latest technologies, we're using robots in ways that are going to help people really address the, what we call the three Ds, the dull, the difficult, and dirty types of jobs. Those are really the types of tasks that we apply robots to. And uh, interestingly, you know, in uh, between 2012 and 2016, we added about 25,000 jobs to General Motors uh, uh, employment roles at the same time that we added about 10,000 more robots. So, um, you know, we definitely view that as you, as you use more robots, we get more employment. We were able to build more, more products. And you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And a programming note here, Autoline will be off all next week as we take a well-deserved summer break, but we'll be back on July 9th. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.